Grita Radio. Señal binaria en tus oídos. The way you see the world, it seems as though you speak for me. You ask. Hola, ¿qué tal? Bienvenidos a Grita Radio. Estoy muy emocionada porque fui invitada el día de hoy para hacer una increíble entrevista con esta persona también increíble, que es Johnny Indovina, de Human Drama. Muchos de ustedes ya conocen a esta banda que tiene muchísimos años de trayectoria, más o menos desde 1980, 1985 hasta ahorita. Ustedes me conocen, soy Tamerlane Mortician, conocida como Tammy Abominable, y vamos a empezar esta super entrevista. Hi, Johnny. Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you, thanks for being here. It's an honor to have you here uh, in Grita pleasure. Radio. Again. Again. I've been here before. So a couple of times you've been here. A couple of times, yeah. Yeah, a couple of times you've been here. Um, today, I have the honor to interview you. I'm very happy about that. So, um, I know that you love Mexico because somebody told me that you are kind of You, you love the people in Mexico. You love your fans in Mexico. What is it that they give you when you're here that it, that it makes you feel like at home? Because I, I've heard that in other interviews that you really, really appreciate sure. Mexico and the Mexican fans. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the first time we came, um, to our surprise, the audience was so responsive mm -hmm. and already, you know, knew our, knew our music. So it was easy for me to say, well, I, I love Mexico because the music was, you know, was happening and they made us feel really great. Mm -hmm. But since then, since coming back more and more times is when I really learned about the culture. I got to meet people and have conversations with them that weren't about me being on a stage. I got to see a lot of the art. I love the um, architecture. I love the way the, the city operates. So I, I fell in love with it. I, I loved it the first time I came because of the audience. But now I really just fell in love with the city. And um, a real special thing that happened in my life that another country mm -hmm. made me feel like such a part of their culture. Wow, that is, that is, that is really great. Uh, what is the difference between the Mexican public and... Maybe, I don't know, the public in the United States. Do you have, like, is, is it a different atmosphere, a different way of interacting with them? Look, you know, we always do the same thing um, when we get on stage. We always have the same goal. And I can't generalize that the United States is a certain way. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that it does vary city to city. To city, right. There are many great rock and roll music cities in the United States. Um, Los Angeles is not one of them. Oh, and, and, really? And, and that's where I live. Really? Yeah, it's, um, it's not conducive to art for art's sake. They're only into what is what they are told is the big thing that's happening right now. And that's really they So to. they go like with trends. Yeah, well, that, without a doubt. It's all about jumping on and trying to be a part of something so that it feeds your ego like uh you know it's i'm probably going too far with it but there's mm. a reason that i stopped uh trying to book gigs i got you in los angeles i got or, you totally you know, so this this uh this city is all about music and family art god it's wonderful And it's sad that you say about Los Angeles because what I know about it is that from New Orleans, you guys went to Los Angeles yeah. after to make a career in yeah. Los Angeles with the scream scene. Sure. Right? Yeah. Could you explain to us about what was the scream scene about? Absolutely. Um, we were lucky to arrive in Los Angeles at one of its biggest music points ever. And we were very lucky that we happened to go in 1985. Um, many clubs, no one doing the same thing as somebody else. Everyone different, but everyone shared the same stage. 
You didn't see, you know, three country bands, three rap bands, three electronic bands, three guys. No, it was the whole night was different. And every band drew their people. And those people stayed and watched the next acts because they, there was, a, if you come to this club, mm-hmm. just might see something that changes your life. So yeah. that was Los Angeles 85 to right around 2000. Okay, I got you. Yeah, and Scream was born from such, so many bands that were rising and just filling up these small clubs that um, Dale Gloria, Michael Stewart, and Bruce Perdue Mm -hmm. decided to open Scream one night a week and um, book the bigger bands and Jane's Addiction, ourselves, Community of K, Red Hot Chili Peppers, wow. TSOL. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I can go on and on. Lions and Ghosts was one of the best bands of those periods. They did not quite to make it like everybody didn't quite else. make it, but they were one of the best bands uh-huh. that were on the scene. Mm-hmm. And um, it was very conducive to growing your audience week by week, not year by year, mm-hmm. week by week. We would play for. You know, five people in L.A., they liked us. They talked about it. We would have 35 the next time. Then we'd have 150. Mm-hmm. Then we were at, it really happened like that in that city. It is not like that anymore. Well, I think in a lot of cities, it's like that, too. I think, like, New York, um, I wonder. the, the I wonder. scene is, too, it's it's not like it used to be anymore. Um, I think pop music right now is what has... He, they got or everybody, the new generations. Um. I see what you're saying. I think what you're getting at is mm-hmm. I'm starting to sound like my dad sounded when I was young. Exactly. We all become our dads, right? Get, hey, kids, get off the lawn. Quit making noise. You right, know, that kind right. Of well, it, they used to be like CBGBs, right, in well, New course, York. Yeah. I don't know when they closed. I think it was like 2000 something, right? And that's when that finished too, because now it was only nightclubs and going to listen to uh, pop music and all these artists and, and Beyonce and Britney Spears and, and all that. And now these new generations of here, at, at least in Mexico, we have like these new generations of reggaeton. I don't know if you've heard of reggaeton. Uh, <laughs> that is what is finishing kind of what is rock music in Mexico. Okay. No, so it is it is kind of difficult here too. Okay. But people are very excited that bands like you guys come here and play because they want to get out of what is really happening here mm. and they want to see something completely different. Have we turned into a classic? I think yeah. yeah. I, I think, think maybe a long time ago, huh? Probably, probably it's a classic, but new generations are listening a lot to goth music and like there's this new boom of goth music that I know that is coming out from under the rocks, under the ground and there's a lot of kids that want to listen to different things. They don't have a lot of choices right now and they see like you come here and give us all this um goth music mm-hmm. right that people want to listen to because a goth band is human drama a goth band is it a what you do we sound like me, in the goth scene you know you 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 explain to me if you guys are a goth band or Absolutely what do you not. what what do you consider yourself i don't consider as? myself anything is what you feel is I, what I you am do. not part of any um Gener- I, I, I wouldn't have been that I, I don't write for a, any kind of a scene mm-hmm and I think that's, yeah, was Leonard Cohen a goth band? Mm, was David Bowie a goth band? You know, no, but a lot of people that follow uh-huh. them are from the goth scene. That is what we are. Exactly. We were lucky enough that our words really landed with um, the dark scene here, mm-hmm. also in Los Angeles, I must say. Right. And I think it was always about the words because human drama was always so different than everything else mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. Um, totally yeah, yeah so so no we, we we never strived to be anything but we wanted to make great albums that were 
you couldn't say, eh, they sound just like Morrissey. They sound just like Tom Pitt. You couldn't no, say No, and I don't and I don't think you you'd sound like anything else. Yes. Yes, I really I, do believe that you don't sound like anything else. Yeah, and that that has been a blessing and a curse for us. Right, completely. Yeah, I'll take the blessing. Completely. So what made you go into the music? Johnny, what was the thing that opened you into going into being a musician? I was about 14 or 15, maybe even a little younger, and I was walking down the street listening to radio, mm -hmm. coming back from my girlfriend's house again, very young, and um, I heard Ground Control to Major Tom, which is what I thought the title was, and I heard it for the first time, and when I got home, I called the station to go, can you play ground and she said oh, no no that's called space oddity and space oddity. we'll play it in about an hour and i got to hear it again that night mm -hmm. and from that moment on it um it hit me you can you can really feel music can change a person it can change what you're thinking and um and then i rapidly learned that collecting albums collecting music your favorite artist um was almost like the young kids version in the seventies of collecting art. Mm -hmm. It was ours, you know, it was ours and you mm -hmm. learned and you grew with the artist and, and that's what drew me to away from football and baseball and basketball. You used to play and baseball? It was that moment. Everything. I played everything. Oh really? Myself. You were, yeah. you were a little, um, go ahead, say something derogative. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I wasn't going to say anything derogative. You were, into sports you were a little a little yeah. sports boy yes i was a sports boy <laughs> so your parents did your parents like music no not not particularly but they're very supportive when i went into it okay yeah so david bowie was kind of your that song drew me and bowie was he kind my, of like pushed you thing. into yeah, yeah i want to do this yep did you grab a guitar like getting all the songs out like david bowie were you like I got playing a Gene Genie. Nah, I, got, I got a guitar. <laughs> um, but I didn't learn to play it so much until I was about 19. All right. Yeah, I didn't um didn't I didn't sit and study, but I did try to play um Space Oddity. <laughs> I remember trying. Did you get it? <laughs> yeah, I got the first two or three chords, I guess. <laughs> I and the I voice got, the voice was kind of like, yeah, kind yeah, of important yeah, too, yeah, right? That's like, right? To get it. Yeah. <laughs> so um I wanted to ask you something that I think is very important um human drama for you what has been the evolution since you started until now the the musical evolution of human drama how would you describe it growing from album to album mm -hmm. taking chances not being ever making the same album twice um try to get deeper emotions both mm -hmm. musically and lyrically mm -hmm. like never get lazy and and that is the 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 music the collection of albums that i wanted to leave behind and i think we've done that i truly think you know you've done, done a good job like Thank every you. record i think sound has Absolutely. a different sound completely yep. yep wow and what happened with you guys when you were in pandemic did we you made, stop? The, made two because, albums. Oh, you did make yeah. two albums. One album came out during it called Blurred Images. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we recorded uh, what turned into Ten Small Fractures, the new one. The new so one. All of that was done during that time. All right. Yeah, I was very busy. Well, yeah, you had to be doing something or uh, you went crazy, right? It, yeah, I was. Yeah, I'm always doing something, but that's what we did. Yeah, that mm -hmm. was it. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And now. That you're here in Mexico. Okay. We want to talk about that. What are what is it? What is it that's gonna happen the 9th of September? We want to kind of know a little bit of what's gonna be going on on stage. What is the what is this new well, project okay. you've got? Well, it's 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 human drama, mm -hmm. simply. Um, I'm playing with a full band of uh, Mexican musicians right now, two of which have been with us for a while, Claudia okay. Gonzalez on flute, um, Jerry Pozos on violin, mm -hmm. and we're introducing Dolce Luna mm -hmm. on piano. All right. And myself, and it'll be um, just the four of us. And on the 9th, the Saturday, 5 o'clock, I believe it is, um, uh, in coordination with Mix Ups, 
record store chain. Right. We are doing a showcase with them at Plaza Loretta. All right. And it's just going to be a short little showcase, some of the new album, and talk a little bit about the album. And um, everyone, we found out today that everyone is invited. All right. Whether you made the purchase of the album or not ahead of time. Okay, um, that's 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 some interesting yeah, news that yes. anybody that wants to go, they could go without even taking maybe the CD, right? Yeah, yeah. That, but yeah. it would be nice for you guys that are really fans of, of human drama to get the CD because having physical music, that is so important for... The artists right now is not just Spotify, Ugh. right? It's not Ugh. just going on platforms and Yuck. getting the stuff. It's really getting the stuff that is material that you could look at the art, that you could look at the lyrics, right? It's so different to have it. That's why bands do it. So please support us in the way that totally, you know. That we and it's it's taken. to have like a collection. Do you, have you heard of? Um, maybe I've thought maybe of getting out um, vinyl. Yeah, we are releasing the new album on vinyl, and there might be vinyl at the showcase. All right. We're not a hundred percent sure, but there it might arrive in time. All right. So Human Drama has a vinyl too, so you guys have to go and get some merch. Oh, it's white. That's right. The vinyl is actually white, opaque white. Really? Yeah, totally surprised. Very nice. Record company gave us a nice surprise. Okay. All right. And 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 going back to um, what you're going to be doing for this, like this new record that mm -hmm. you're uh, promoting right now, right. Um, you were making a video with Gene Blalock. Yes. Tell us about this director. I think he is very important for you guys because he did a couple of other things with you, right? He certainly did. Gene uh, and I have become friends over the years, many years. Uh, when we first met in Chicago back in the mid-90s, um, he let me take a shower at his apartment because I didn't have any place to mm -hmm. go before a concert. All and right. that was kind of <laughs> where we first started. And his band opened for us that night. So oh, he has a he has he a band. Had a band back in, in those days. Yeah, okay. Where he came from. Mm -hmm. And Gene directed three videos, I think, from my solo album. Two. Mm -hmm. Two videos from the solo album. Mm -hmm. And he also directed one from Blurred Images and directed one from Ten Small Fractures. I have Leonardo over here. Yeah. Because I, I know. Truly <laughs> But Gene has done a lot of, of videos with us now. Mm -hmm. And also he was the director of the Seven Days in Mexico, in Mexico. documentary uh -huh. that came out on wherever, Amazon and Apple and all that stuff. Okay, so everybody check that one out too. <clears throat> yes. Who hasn't seen it, check it out. And the talks have begun. Mm -hmm. uh, Gene mentioned he wants to do the full official human drama documentary. Oh, that's so awesome. those talks have just started. And the only thing that I asked Gene was to see if he could finish it before I die. So he's on a he's on a time frame. <laughs> now you're you're still going for long. Don't worry about it. But, you know, things well, take a while, so that, that, that was it. You know, <laughs> take your time. But maybe let me be alive when it comes up. Of course, probably sell more and more people will see it if I'm not. But anyway, I digress. Back to you. <laughs> Okay, so we were talking about the singles, right? It's um, tell us about each one of them. What is, Ooh. what is it? What does it talk about? What does it uh, feel be doing them and being part of your life? What is it? These singles. What talk about your life, or what do you want to express with these singles? I'm completely lost. <laughs> I don't have any idea what you're asking me. Would you like me to tell you a little bit about the new album? Tell me tell me about the new album. Okay. Tell me about the singles. And okay. what what do they represent about you, these singles? What do they talk about you? They like represent about me. Okay. That's a good question. <laughs> How do they represent me? Anyway, they're my songs. They're something that I felt so I get to write the songs. Right, and, um, exactly. And the ones on 10 Small Fractures, especially the singles we released, uh, Father Sing, Tears, 
and there was a there was a third one in there. Um, Dying in a moment of splendor. Um, these are reworkings of uh, the original songs that came out on the albums. Ones that we thought felt even I don't want to say more powerful, but powerful in a different way. Mm-hmm. Really moving and done in these piano arrangements fantastically done by Mark Balderas, our, our pianist. Right. Mm-hmm. So um, we felt the power come from these songs. We found the 10 that we felt at the time best translated and spoke loudest in this format. Mm-hmm. And those are the ones we've done. And um, I'll talk about one of the singles. Uh, the third single, uh, the second single was Tears. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Um, but the single Tears, I remember writing it while we were recording our first RCA record in 88 in in Wales. We were in Wales doing that one. And in between recording, I was in the vocal booth and I wrote Tears. Mm-hmm. And I remember the piano version when we first did it. I remember thinking, it's like I'm alone in that vocal booth just sitting there while there's nobody around. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right. Mm-hmm. I think I found it. Before I just wrote a song, good words, n- nice up tempo. It was still strong the way I sang it. But I think this version is actually correct. I can, I'll just talk about that one. That I really felt that. That's the answer I was looking for. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Whew, Maybe the question was a little like. Look, no, I, I've been fl- I've been flying all day. And, <laughs> I could um, imagine. Yeah, I could imagine. Don't mistake this energy for anything other than <laughs> acting. <laughs> right. And happy to be. Here, no, no, no. We're. I, I repeat. We're very happy of having you here, and. People want to know. Some people want to know. Okay. What do you think about artificial intelligence? I think it's ridiculous. I think that um, technology in the way of AI um, will eventually it will eventually bring human beings under the guidance of something artificial. Right. Exactly. I think it'll start slow. I think that you'll find a lot of jobs disappear. I'll find that misinformation, you'll find that misinformation becomes more and more dominant to where you believe something. I don't believe that, but we both don't really know, Mm -hmm. except it'll be around the whole world. I I think it's when when new technology comes into play, it can be used very beneficially. It really can. Yeah, in like the ways of medicine. Uh, there you go. Right. You said it. The medical mm-hmm. field, medical field right. is going to get better and better and better. And hopefully costs don't go higher and higher and higher. Right. Instead of developing all these things that you can do, maybe you should only do the things that you should do. And that would be first helping the people that need help, making the financial one uh, percent and the rest of us mm-hmm. kind of be divided a little bit more. There are a lot of hardworking people out there that aren't making anything, mm-hmm. but they work just as hard. Yeah. Um, I don't like it. I don't like that the AI is now writing press releases. I think if you do that, you're an idiot, and I think you're it's laughable to me. But go ahead. I don't have that much longer left here. Good luck to everybody who does. Um, but someone should step up and. Do the things that will be beneficial for the future and don't do the things that you can do that may take over. And I don't mean take over like robots. I mean take over by the powerful people that um, developed it and created it, mm-hmm. who now own it, right. now mm-hmm. have, maybe yeah. maybe then they have their whole line of robots waiting for you. I don't know. I'm joking on that. But um yeah, I think I've said enough. You see how I feel, but again, it's my age. I lived through a beautiful time, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. I was born in the 50s. I was there, you know? I think I still had some of that good part of a generation. I was born in the 70s. Yeah, beautiful. So I still got to play with dolls and play with real material stuff. Yeah. Not really like, I mean, Atari came out and I was like, 
like I don't know the kids now with uh, PlayStation and all that kind of stuff, but we still could go out and play at the, in, in the street. That's what we used to do. So I I I think I got that good part of what you you had too. Yes, you did. In your generation, yes, you saw it. I saw it um, with all these bands that came out, like and, and the engineers of these bands, like grunge and industrial and goth and pop and everything that all these new generations are not getting to really experience yeah no like to go to concerts and now because it's dangerous sometimes to go to concerts um <laughs> everything is just like upside down that's Things how don't seem to be getting better no i don't think they're getting better what about this TikTok thing these influencers what about this garbage it's, it's really sad because that's who the new generations admire. narcissist ego driven helpless sensitive as soon as they don't have their million followers and it drops to 100 they'll probably shoot themselves, shoot themselves. i hope they don't right. oh this is ridiculous where it's going yeah totally. whoever's paying these influencers you should be ashamed of yourself you're going to cast them away like garbage. Well, I don't know what's going to happen. So, I, I mean, at one point, there has to be a limit to all this because... I don't know that that's true. And that's when you ask the AI question. I don't know mm -hmm. who is going to govern it so that there is a limit. Who? That who? Know. who? Everybody exists? on top are the ones that are the, the owners of all this. Which means we're done. If they say, we're oh, that done, is we're really done. sad. What you yeah. say? <laughs> there are stores in the United States that won't accept cash. Oh, really? Card only. Mm. Now you know somebody can push that button anytime they want, and your car doesn't work, and mine doesn't, and his doesn't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does everybody know that? Mm -hmm. They're slowly making it okay. Well, okay, if I can't use cash, then just a car away. I can't use a card. I need a chip in my wrist. Here I am. Eyeball recognition. Yeah. I want a bag of chips. Eyeball. Thank oh, that's you. scary. That's really yeah. scary. Well, in, in Japan or was it Japan or China? I'm so sorry. That's kind of wrong that I don't know. I think it's in China. Mm -hmm. The the eye recognition is full blown. You'll get a you'll get a ticket in the mail because the camera recognizes your eyes jaywalking. Mm -hmm. And it just you don't get a ticket in the mail. I'm sorry, I oh, said that God. wrong. The scary part is your account has fifty dollars less in it. That's Why? Because it. you were jaywalking. You were jaywalking. It they caught you like, jay on your eyes. On your eyes. Yeah, and don't even just what that's privacy it. Boom. can you have right anymore? Right out of your like, account. That just is, that it's that gone. Is sick. Yeah. That is sick. that is happening right now. Anyway. Now we're a little out of what is music, but it, no, it does have. F we're going to have a great time Saturday. Yeah, Saturday is going to be it's going to be great. So we're inviting you all of fans and not fans of human drama to go and listen to maybe something that you haven't listened to and we're going to see you all there and so, you know i hope that i can even take some questions if it's intimate enough to take questions i i i will i want to talk a little bit about the new album and kind of tell people a little bit about this is sure, what we were anybody thinking. that wants to go and ask our dear johnny about Anything they want to know about human drama, about their new singles, about everything you guys are. He's giving you the liberty of asking him so he could answer I these questions. I hope that we can make that happen. Um, I'll do everything I can do That would for be that. great. That would be great. Thank you, Johnny, so much for being here. Thank you. <laughs> it was a great interview. So I'm a little tired. Thank you. Gracias, Grita Radio, por tenernos aquí. A song for you? A song for me. What do you recommend? Of mine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, let's play something off the new album. Let's play Voices. Is it a single? No. It's just off the new album. The new album is out already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Muchas gracias y los vemos por aquí pronto. The way It seems as though you see